Twas two short years ago, they seem fate laden aeons now. Faith saw the destined glory gleam, or Ulster's helmed brow. Yet faith itself might not foretell such transcendental dower. When yawned the gates of death and hell, and broke the awful hour, from Antrim glens and hills of down, and moaning northern sea, from mill and mart and thronging town strode Ulster's chivalry. Heroes reborn of the red branch, they leapt into the fray, whelmed by the steely avalanche that long midsummer day. Life, t'was a little thing to give, death, t'was a toy to try. They knew that Ulster dared not live, did they not dare to die? There blithely venturing in the van, a kinsman of mine own, in years a boy, in heart a man, was radiantly overthrown. Gay as a lark, the tribute this, by chief and comrade penned. He sang his way to the abyss, and smiled on death his friend. For him no sombre requiem, no threnody of tears, who bartered for each diadem, the dress of after years. Widowed women, whose days are of sorrow, with hands of the past on the eyes of tomorrow, with the hush and the wash and the clutch of the sea, between you and that one, between that one and me, take you the solace that our men rest, each with his welcome as cherished guest, folded in lilies to Francis' breast. Neighbour breezes are lipping the waves to leave your thoughts at those thoughtful graves and a gallant voice of fulfilment comes back to Britain on soft surf drums. Take you then solace on burning your weeping. If your hearts are folded in France and sleeping, your hearts, sad sisters, are in safekeeping. There are lonely graves in Flanders and aching hearts today. For mothers mourn the gallant lads who bravely marched away to fight a country's righteous cause and prove their right to live. But only God, the mother's God, knows what those mothers give. There are lonely graves in Flanders where noble hearts lie still, whose glorious deeds in coming days a nation's pride shall thrill. Their lofty names and lowly fames that neath one common sod, a nation's record of its brave, some mother's gift to God. There are lonely graves in Flanders, and mothers everywhere keep vigil in their hearts today, or loves one sleeping there, in memory of those Flanders graves where God and others meet, will God's true battle fight be fought, his victory there complete. Irish hearts were never prouder, Irish praise was never louder. You can almost smell the powder and hear the clash of steel as you read the thrilling story and unprecedented glory of the dashing Irish regiments who made the Jerry's squeal. They have won the approbation and unstinted admiration of every allied nation for their deeds of daring do. Faith, if there is any fighting, for a wrong at once a righting. You may trust the boys of Paddy's land to see the matter through. And before the war is finished, with ardour undiminished, the boys will claim another day to make the Jerry's wine. The Murphys and the Lynches will spring out from the trenches and never stop pursuing till the Bosches cross the Rhine. Hurrah, glory, Connacht Rangers, you never dream of dangers. And glory to the Dublin and the Munster Fusiliers. Likewise the Irish Rifles, who never deal in trifles. Your heroes, every one of you, three hearty allied cheers. They lie asleep today in France, 
our brave, our noble boys, who shared a short, short time ago our pleasures and our joys. Why are our eyes so dim today and our hearts distressed? Tis because the Kaiser's cruel greed has robbed us of our best. The rush of work is stopped today while heads are bowed in prayer. The voice of those we miss so much comes floating on the air. Five minutes was the given time and what a rush of thought. I heard a voice say victory, but oh, so dearly bought. Can time replace the happiness that cruel greed destroys? Ask at a home within our midst that mourns three noble boys. Ask the mother whose sons are gone lost to her through war. A wound so deep may sometimes heal, but always live, leaves a scar. Sleep on our heroes, take your rest, you help to turn the tide. And though our eyes are filled with tears, our hearts are filled with pride. In days to come, when strife has ceased and war is at an end, we will tell about you often and with pride we'll call you friend. Some think we may forget you, but no, we never will. New friends may rise around us, we will think about you still. Will your nation ever forget you, how you fought your country's foe? In the names of right and justice, we would gladly answer no. Green and yellow, scarlet, blue, charlotte, poppies, cornflowers too. All the wealth of summer new as we march by. Along the trench the flowers grow, beneath the network's deadly road. The cruel wires that stop the foe, where brave men die. All the colours soon will fade, summer's gifts will be disarrayed, autumn's debts be fully paid, shall we march by. Where are the lads who once did roam through the streets and fields of their northern home? They are far away across the foam out here in France. We volunteered, not conscript brought, to defend what our forefathers dearly bought and defend the deeds of the German plot in France. Ulster's hope and Ulster's pride for England's cause we have bled and died. My comrades lie here side by side in France. Come out, ye lads who have stopped behind, fill up the gaps in the fighting line and avenge the deaths of your heroes fine in France. And when the cannons cease to roar, with peace restored for evermore, what's left will sail for Erin's shore from France. Lines on the Ulsterman. We mourn for our Ulster heroes who fell in the great advance. Many a gallant soldier now lies in a grave in France. Their march was most courageous. Press onward was their cry. This is the way to victory, so let us do or die. But when we mourn the fallen, again we stop and pause. They gave their lives for their country and for a righteous cause. And when the war is ended and victory is won, we'll remember still our heroes and the noble deeds they've done. The call went forth for manly hearts to stem invasion's tide, and bidding her a brave farewell, he parted from his bride. A teardrop dimmed his steadfast eye, a tremor shook his frame. T'was bitter hard to say goodbye to her who bore his name. For two short months they lived as one, O oh, blissful bitter past. But work for men was to be done, and he was near the last. She lingered in his fond embrace, was inspiration given. She never more would see that face, till they remet in heaven. Oh, woe the day, oh, woe the shot that laid her hero low. Two loving hearts were shattered, 
in that one fatal blow. O Lord, let peace reign in the grave, attend my earnest prayer, and comfort that poor widow's heart who kneels grief-stricken there.